Hey everybody, my name is Michelle and I'm a volunteer here at the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center. Today I'm hanging out with Navi and Tala and we wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, some basic biology with wolves. So a while ago we had a question on the reproductive behavior of wolves. So wolves, like most wildlife, they only reproduce once a year. Now there's a misconception, um, especially spread by the anti-wolf folks, that wolves reproduce year-round. Um, that's not true. Wolves only go into season in January and February, so that means they give birth in March and April. Um, occasionally you might get a litter a little bit later that are born in May. Now wolves generally will only give birth to three to five pups at a time. Sometimes the litters can be a little bit larger, sometimes they're going to be a little bit smaller. One really neat fact about wolves, when they are born, no matter what species they are, if they're arctic wolves, mexican greys, uh, timber wolves like Navi here, they are always born with the black fur. Now they're also always born with blue eyes. However, um, like I said in the last wolf blog, the blue eyes aren't necessarily blue like a husky blue, but they're more like a slate gray. Now as the wolves get older, their eyes turn into this beautiful uh, golden or amber color. Now wolves, they will stay with their, the pack that they were born with um, until they're about two years old. That's when they start to branch off and they create their own packs by meeting up with a lone wolf. So wolves are never truly lone. Um, I know a lot of times people use the term lone wolf for somebody who likes to be alone. Um, they're kind of, they're really independent but strong-willed. Wolves that are alone in the wild are ones that are looking for a mate. And so probably the most famous lone wolf in the world uh, for a while was OR7, one of the very first wolves that had um, been collared in Oregon. He was the seventh wolf collared in Oregon. <laughs> um, and he actually made it down into California. And he was the very first wolf to make it down to California. Now, of course, we... <laughs> We all probably have heard by now that California is home to their very own wolf pack. It's the Shasta Pack, um, and they're the first wolf pack to actually call the state home um, in almost 90 years. So very, very important wolves there. But OR7, he was very famous for being alone. Um, and he was alone for several years until he finally found his mate and settled down in, so in southern Oregon. It's usually these wolves, um, the ones that are off looking for a mate, that we call dispersers, I call it. And they are very, very famous because um, most, that's, those are the ones that get called a lone wolf. Tala's trying to eat the camera. Um, <laughs> So these uh, two-year-old wolves, these are very common. Uh, they're the dispersers. So um, unfortunately, a lot of times the dispersers are the ones that end up getting killed. Um, the reason why is because a lot of times they wander into brand new territories looking for those new, uh, new mates or companions. Unfortunately, um, probably one of the more famous ones that we know of right now, a few months ago, the wolf that had made it all the way from Wyoming, she ended up down on the northern ridge of the Grand Canyon and unfortunately she was shot and killed when she returned to Utah. Now, there was a whole national campaign, they named her Echo, uh, really really famous situation but unfortunately she ended up getting shot and killed. Same thing um, a couple months ago we actually had a wolf that got shot and killed here in Colorado outside of Kremlin. And in both of these cases, these were animals that had just turned two. They had left their native pack um, so they could find a mate and try and find a new place home. We've seen the same thing happen. Wolves have been killed in Indiana, uh, Kansas, Missouri, and even Kentucky because they're trying to disperse to reclaim some of that native territory um, that they once called home wolves and how their packs operate. And a large part of this misconception came from some books that were published uh, back in the 70s that had been published after studies were done on captive wolves. And there's a lot of misconceptions about wolves and fighting for dominance and constantly fighting to be the alphas. That is something that takes place in captivity because oftentimes in captivity wolves are not related. So in the wild, a wolf pack is literally the mom and the dad and their kids. That's all the wolf pack consists of. Once in a while you'll have maybe an older wolf um, from an older litter or maybe one of the uncles, <laughs> brothers or sisters um, that might have stayed around. So when we talk about wolves and their reproductive behavior, they don't reach maturity until they are two years old. And once they do reach maturity, that's when they break off from their native pack. 
<laughs> uh, so once they reach two years old, that's when they break off from their home pack and they search for a mate. So when we're talking about wolf packs and there being a lot of arguing and fighting, there's not really a whole lot of it in wild wolf packs. And the reason why uh, there used to be a big myth about alpha wolves and constantly having to argue and fight with the other wolves to try and remain dominant was because of these books that were published down in the 70s. When in reality, because wolves are families, they pretty much get along. Uh, there's not really a lot of arguing, there's not a whole lot of fighting. It's just not something that you see in a wild wolf population. And that's actually one of the reasons why we try and keep our wolves only in pairs because uh, putting a bunch of unrelated wolves together in a pack in an enclosed area especially invites that kind of um, disagreement behavior. So we don't want any of our wolves to get injured due to an unnatural pack hierarchy. So again, my name is Michelle and we were hanging out with Navi and Tala today for our weekly wolf blog. Please let me know any questions that you might have. We'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, and it can pertain to wolves in the wild, wolves in captivity, canines of any sort really. And we'd be happy to get those answered and put on a wolf blog for you. So we'll see you guys next week.